time or so, but yeah, maybe maybe from here on out, maybe in the other events, as we have in the top left side, it is going to be our blue Zerg player from Basilisk. It is Serral. Fresh series. Does so zero zero here. As in the bottom right side, our red Protoss is going to be Showtime. Game one of this best of three as we get going. Get this started out. A couple of drones on the way here from Serral. Just seeing the gateway at the front as well. There goes the probe. Obviously, would love to block the natural hatch. We'd love to force that uh, away. You know, make it a third base location instead. Probe comes around. I'm just going to have a little bit of a venture through. Obviously, has uh, not been able to block that hatchery. So, hatchery does go down. It's going to be our starting point of this. And seeing whether or not Shotan really wants to bring the pressure or do anything aside from just kind of open with the Stargates and the Oracles that he has been so in love with. We'll see how he wants to do this. Obviously, really pushed several to the limits in the best of three they played the other day in the game is without borders. There's a very close series, kind of felt like Showtime had it at multiple points. In the end, several does eke out ahead of him there, and watch Showtime just played well, but had a rough weekend, you know? It was just tough matches for him all across the board, and you know, like I said, still played well. As the Cybercore is about halfway done, the next is about halfway done too. Showtime just getting the setup for himself. Of course, several sneaking that hatch down is nice. Not too crazy, but uh, it always just means that you don't have to worry about kind of transferring drones further away and all that kind of stuff. Did the Mad Lad Reno play? Yes, Reno got knocked out round one today. Lost out to Creator. A uh, couple of aggressive attempts from uh, Reno. He kind of played like 60 drone all ins. And uh, he kind of, uh, yeah, honestly was just not able to break through Creator's defenses. Creator kind of saw it coming both times, got set up defensively, and, and just kind of held. Actually, if you guys weren't here for several classics, several classic was a very close series too. Uh, we didn't see game one and Classic let the series 1-0. to In game two, it felt like Classic had won and just got too aggressive with his army. And Vipers came out and he just wasn't ready for the Vipers specifically. And uh, the Vipers just kind of saved Serral from a very doom and gloom situation. So, actually was uh, very close to seeing Serral drop out early in the tournament as well. We were basically about to have back-to-back -back series where we watched Raynor lose and then Serral lose as well. Uh, link speed is coming up and getting going. <laughs> Every time I look in chat, like, literally it's just Roddy all the way down talking about an Umbra on VMAX. Like, <laughs> I don't know what to tell you, mate. It's just, I'm just a bit lucky, you know, I guess. Feelings move out over to the right hand side. We do have Queens and Drones all continuing to produce in our Nexus starting up on the side of Showtime as well. Oracle also coming in. Warp Gate about to finish. Nexus will be done on the third in just a few moments time. And again, Gateway, Nexus, all of that still coming up. A couple extra probes still coming out as well. And our Oracle just patrolling at the front here too as our Zerglings run up the sides. Our Max Packs and Oliveira playing right now. Nope. Already finished. Oliveira 2-0 Max Packs today. Into the finals already. That happened when we, we kind of decided to go the second game in Dark Showtime. And Oliveira won game one in like five minutes and game two in like eight minutes. It was a very quick series. Very, very quick series. As our Depths go shading around, our Oracle's up through the natural in toward the main base. And Depths at the same time trying to get some drones. Four, five workers going down. The Oracle's turned back onto the natural. Help get some of this damage. Finding some drones transferring as well. Seven workers. We did lose the Adepts though, so this is not for free. This does come at a cost.
Okay, Adepts continue around. Ling's actually gonna get a big surround here in those Adepts. All gonna get picked off. Lair, Roach Roran still coming up. The drones and the Lings continue to come through. The Robo facility is finishing as well. Got extra couple of gateways. Continuing up too. Robo Bay also starting. Uh, plus one attack of Braid also coming up on the forge as well. Queens come over. Oracles get turned away. going across the map but they won't find much at all so they just get turned around too obviously short time continue to tech up behind this twilight and the robo bay he's being pretty fond of getting those disruptors up pretty quickly right that's what we've seen from him in the previous games that we saw in stock for example so trying to get those disruptors up early use those to help defend against some of the more aggressive roach pushes that come out of the zergs lately oracle's activating here for a couple of drones again just trying to keep tabs on things not just the obviously killing the drones but even just getting some revelations down keeping a track of the tech knowing roughly you know, is a lair done? You know, what sort of units are you building? Perhaps what's popping out of that main hatchery? This is all information you can use to piece together. Figure out exactly what the Zerg is up to. How defensive do you need to be? Do you need to maybe start thinking about extra batteries or so? You know, just keeping an eye on drone count in general, I think, is important. Because if you don't, if you know, if you know about the drone count all the time, you can roughly see if there's drones popping or not. That's a good indicator. You don't have to add extra, you know, add on extra static defense because the Zerg's coming to kill you. So yeah, just all, all this information pieces together to give you a good kind of view of the game. And that's why those oracles are so valuable. Obviously, uh, Overseer of Sarah will likely do something similar, trying to figure out any move that Showtime is making. Showtime is moving into a, a the Disruptors, as previously mentioned, and also the Dark Shrine, ready to get that kind of layer of harassment into the PVZ. With the Dark Shrine, the ability to go and uh, get aggressive with all those Dark Templar, he will have, obviously, a nice little setup to work with there, too. I think it's actually going to go wrap around. Disruptor gets killed immediately. Stasis Ward goes off. But the Disruptor being chased. Just about getting away over to the sides. Stasis Ward still catching a few units. Roaches, Ravages, and Queens pushing through the middle of the map. Heading down to the bottom right hand side. A plus two melee. A plus one missiles still coming in. Our Overlord speed also about to finish. Bane speed still coming up. And extra cannons building on the side of Showtime. So again, all of these cannons up and running. A little bit of Lingro Drow is going to go straight onto this set of rocks, so... Rocks already taking quite a bit of damage, an extra Archon morphing in, make it a couple. Cannons are building up as well. Just Disruptor shot through, and boom, just a couple of Banelings going to get caught by that Disruptor shot. Cannons still building through the rest of this army from several down the left-hand side. Disruptors still pushing through as well. They're going to be important. The Zealots getting caught as they go adventuring out, though, so... At least that's an early catch for Serral and something he doesn't have to worry about. That you're going to run by being shut down before it gets anywhere. Serral's axed and generally ready to start fighting. He doesn't have tech. You know, he doesn't have an infestation pit. He doesn't have hive. All he has is the plus two melee and plus one missiles continuing through. So he really wants to do something with this push. Even bringing the queens forward, the creep spread actually pretty darn good through the middle of the map. Going around the right side, just going to be seeing our lings wrapping around. Stasis Ward going. Disruptor shot lands on a Ravager and a couple other units. Now going for some Roaches as well. He's being still trying to push forward, and the Archons and the Disruptor just joined up together to help bend this off. Our Bane's all just kind of rushing on forward here, and actually going to grab some of the warp ins, the battery. And the tech units of Showtime kind of split across a couple of bases. A lot of Savile Supply right now will start to become, you know, reinforcements, so. Isn't going to be here straight away, but as we're killing off Disruptors, doesn't seem like Showtime is working through these last few units of Serral very quickly at all. So Serral doing just fine, kind of keeping up the aggression, keeping up the pressure. It's now going to take a moment or two to knock down this set of rocks and open up this area of the map as well, down the right-hand side. So these rocks will be taken down. Drop a Lord about to finish. Roaches and Banelings still coming in. Extra Zerglings as well in the Archon Force of Showtime making its way down to the south. 
Disruptor shot firing, and we still see the rest of this army from several trying to move into this third base location. Flings, Banes all coming through. Archon's going to stand up. Disruptor shot firing. I'm just going to be seeing the rest of these Banes getting picked away at. Pylon going down as well. We do see the extra Zealots all coming up. Obviously, again, shot down by the cannon. We do have the rest of this army of Cell pushing back into the center. All of these Lings getting... Oh, Zealots getting caught. Again, just more Lings, more Roaches, and a Drop Lord on the way up as well. Extra Banes and the plus two missiles also producing here. 19 Banes, 10 Lings coming out. Cyril's still just staying aggressive, right? I mean, now the infestation pit, so that's finally the first sign of him teching up from this point. Wings continue to the upper right-hand side. Going to start up straight away up there is... Approaches uh, come through, and Archon already going down. A couple of Zealots going to turn back around. The Banes crashing in with this, and actually going to get straight through here. A lot of Disruptors getting blown up for the moment, and as we continue forward, there's going to be one more Roach getting blasted there. I mean, Showtime's still holding on. As long as you're holding on, you got to feel somewhat hopeful, right? You're still in this game. You're still fighting along, fighting through. As Zealots charge in, that Queen taking some damage. A lot of these queens taking some damage, actually. Things do get a few probes in the natural, though. I mean, that's a big deal. Any economy Showtime is losing. Well, I mean, for the moment, it's manageable. You can see four probes building at a time, so he's keeping it back up. He's replacing it. That's a decent disruptor shot, and the split away doesn't do much for Serral, so he loses a cluster of roaches. Serral did drop the infestation pit, but he's not done anything else with it still. It's a group of Banelings going down. Banelings from the other side. Stasis Ward will catch those. Showtime. Defending for the moment. Losing a little bit of a stack defense. Some Banelings get in. So we're going to get maxed out again here. 40 new Zerglings. All on the way out. Plus two missiles finishing up as well. All the Lings coming around. Zell's going to get fully cleaned. Gonna have the cannon picking away at a few of those banelings as well. The banes crash into some stalkers. Not much really gonna happen with that. Hive is already producing and a lot more banes warping in as well in the center of the map. So again, all of those up as well right now. Ready to go again. Like I say, I mean, he's slowly taking, you know, a couple attacks ago he started the infestation pit. Now he starts up the hive. He's gonna keep attacking seemingly. Doesn't have tons of money. Well, he has no money in the bank, so it's not like you can instantly rebuild off these trades. Which starts to become a little concerned, perhaps. This time a lot of Lings get a good wrap around to start. The Disruptors are a little bit slow to come into action, and... Well, this was a better fight for Serral for sure. He got a lot of Banes left over. They're going to go crashing through the Stalker lines. Probes that transfer and over, kind of getting caught in the crossfire here. And this base will go down, so a base kill for Serral. Definitely going to aid a lot more. Now Showtime's uh, supply is actually hurting a little bit more than it's hurt in a long time. So that's looking to make a big difference here. Army of Serral spread now at extra 21 Banelings morphing in. Roaches as well, plus one carapace also producing here in the Disruptors. Corona boosting out of the robotics facility. The Stasis Ward will just finish up on the sides, just get that set straight away. Adrenal glands plus three melee. Carapace about halfway done. More Ling, more Bane. Still producing those lings are going to go get a wrap around another disruptor shot players. Stasis Ward catches a Ravager. PT coming in, going to get rid of a couple of drones already. And these Archons just going to go through and pick their way through some Banelands as well. Nine probes, couple of drones, all being knocked down. The Nexus will fall. Showtime supply really just isn't standing up to the test anymore. Serral is eventually going to have this breakthrough and going to have game number one of the semi final. GG. Let's take the role of Twitch chat. <laughs> All right, top left-hand side, the blue Zerg player from Basilisk. This is Serral. Now up one game and looking for one more to get to the finals today. As in the bottom right side of the map, our red Protoss player. This is Showtime.
attempt two of our best of three. Zerg EL with the 10 gifted subs. Thank you so much for the generosity. Going out of Death Pony, Demi SC2, Deletus, Heavenly Vibes, Angry SC2, Seven Blunt, Omaha Kid, AEG Grim, Kitty Lynn, and TL Inspire. Thank you so much for the generosity, Zerg EL. On the 10 gifted subs. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hell yeah. Hopefully, we get to see Mario join these competitions. I imagine Mario will play in some of these. If nothing else, just to guarantee his qualification without having to play, like, open qualifiers for the big event. Obviously just didn't fancy it this week. He played Gamers Without Borders this weekend, guys, you know. Mario playing in, like, two tournaments over the course. He might actually wait until his GSL group is over as well, right? GSL starts next week, I think. So, yeah, I think um, that will be a pretty big part of it as well, actually. I, I think he'll play, just he'll he'll wait until GSL is done, or at least he's like through to the next round of GSL or something. There's gonna be eleven of these cups, so. He's been playing in KSL, the Korean StarCraft League. We'll see if you like uh no reason not to play in something four times larger, right? So yeah. He's been more open to playing these uh open events and so on, which is obviously for us just cool to see. Thanks, Speed, coming up. We do have our Overlord just coming across the map to scout initially. Obviously, again, Serral up 1-0. to zero. Really just working down Showtime. Good call as well, because it didn't really feel like it was being too successful straight away. And I was kind of starting to think, I was like, oh my goodness, like, you know, are we going to be okay here, Serral? Is this going to be all right? Or are we going to be in some trouble? Because he just wasn't teching. He was refusing to go beyond what he was using. I was like, well, he doesn't feel like you're making much progress, but... He added in the infestation bit, then the hive, it never really came down to any of that. Eventually, he did just find enough damage to break through. There was that round of bams that killed 20 probes, and it felt like there, that, that one fight then was really the deciding one. Showtime never really stood up properly again after that, whereas all the previous fights, he kind of came back out swinging. Overlord just hanging in the OV a couple of times there. A little bit of damage being done. Well, Lings moving up the sides. So again, Ling speed is about to finish up. The flare about to be completed as well. More drones still building up. Hatchery on the way. Extractor coming through. So far, so good. Look at the fast Hydra den from Sarah, by the way. Two base kind of Hydras, right? That's just how quick the lair was. He's, he's rushing the Hydras, guys. Sarah has done this a couple times in the past. Currently using this for a drop a Lord start, by the way. Knows where the pylon is, so we'll drop where the vision is not. And we'll get eight lings to run into this main mineral line, which is quite deadly at this stage of the game. If there's no Oracle nearby to defend, the two Oracles currently... Uh, where are they, actually? Two Oracles out and about on the map. Now oh, They're pretty quick to come into the main, so it's actually not that big of a deal. The lings don't get much done. Good micro on the probes. You want to minimize the effect of those lings. And okay, well, actually, not a uh, bad start I, from Showtime. Sarah, like I say, going to use this now as a chance to move into the Hydras, though. And this is absolutely a timing, right? I mean, this is Ling Hydra going to become pushing out the front very quickly. Sarah looking for a quick win here in game two. Like I say, not the kind of super normal orthodox Serral, but it's not something It's not something that's completely new to him. We've seen him with this every now and again. Every couple of months, it seems like this comes around for him as something he tries out and, you know, oftentimes does see some success with it as well. So let's see. Lings and Hydra still building on the top left-hand side and... You have our Twilight and Forge finally coming up from Showtime 2. This is not necessarily going to be there to help against this initial round of Ling Hydra. The Oracles see it. Showtime's aware. You can immediately see sentries, batteries. The preparation defensively begins. He knows that this is going to be aggressive from Serral. He knows he's going to need something. The Lings take the chance now to actually get up the high ground. He's looking to force the force fields already, I think. Make sure that he doesn't get force fields down the ramp with his Hydras. Yo, there's not a lot of Hydras, though, and the Oracles are going to trade pretty well here. We don't even kill the first one. Uh-oh. 
As Serral misjudged this, now he's got extra Hydra showing up, but I think he went a bit too soon with the first group of Hydras. The two Oracles both surviving on low HP. That said, the Lings have been pretty active here, forcing the Super Battery now. We do kill off one of these Oracles. Super Battery obviously still active. The Hydra's still trying to fight. This is mostly just Lings, though, because the Hydra count's been worked down. Hydras are meant to be this kind of powerful set of units behind the Lings, but we've never seen them be, high, you know, in good enough numbers to really have too much of an impact. Now the Oracles are out of energy. There's a new Oracle showing up. Will that make a difference? The two Hydras here trying to back it up. Running away, still letting the Lings put some work in. Batteries are going to be out of energy very soon, but I just don't know if there's enough Lings to make this happen. If the Oracles haven't done so well against the Hydras, I think we might just be on our way to a Game 3 because Showtime right now is looking like this is defended. He's got another Oracle popping up. The Blink is halfway done. Things running, surrounding Sentry, surrounding the Stalkers. Let's see how our Hydra's going to get picked off, and that's going to be GG. Cell does not have what he needs. This will indeed go to Showtime, and this will be a Game 3 on the horizon. We're going to top right-hand corner of the map, it is our Hydra Russia. He's not working out for him in that Game number 2. Let's see what he's got in store for Game 3 from Basilisk. It's Serral. And in the bottom left, our Red Protoss, Showtime. Game three of the best of three. Winner plays Oliveira in the Grand Finals. Cool to see Oliveira having a run. He took down Hero and Max Pax on his way to the finals. That is quite a statement in my eyes. We're just going to check in. This time we did get the hatchery block off as well. So you force that hatchery over to the third base location. As that probe just comes through, nippling at the mineral lines. Gateway coming up, probe on the way up. All of that getting set as we do have our hatch gas and pool all the way in for now. Seven X goal will be coming out here and just seeing the Nexus still coming through as well. So everything just getting set up. Our Hatch Gas and Pool coming in on the side of Serral. Probe is going to get nibbled at by that drone and I'm just going to shove that probe away. Couple Queens still coming out, Link still coming through. We'll also have that Link speed getting started. So a lot of setup for the moment, as mentioned. Uh, build up a PVZ. Stargate again from Showtime. No surprises there. We know he's just confident playing into these longer defensive games. That's what the Oracles let him set up for, so. And that Link Speed's still coming through. Our Stargate's about halfway done as well, and we've seen a couple of probes and the Adept still coming up as we get everything ready. The Link gets in, though. It's really nice just to get full confirmation that this is a Stargate. Just super early on, right? I mean, you can sometimes tell off the warp gate timing starting and so on, but this just absolutely confirms no mind games possible. It's complete confirmation for Serral, so he gets in, he gets that little bit of a scout. Link Speed will be finishing up soon. A couple of drones completing and the hatchery about halfway done on the third base location from Serral as well, so... Get that up and running. We have our two adepts moving in and just seeing one Ling already running away here. And a couple of drones. Gonna have an Evo Chamber to wall them off. I mean, even that's nice. It takes up a drone for a while. It's a little bit of money investment as well. Adepts want to try and uh, be annoying. And to be fair, they're just kind of threatening, right? Just... 
Ending up on new mineral lines, keeping the lings pinned back as well, not letting them get anywhere too exciting. The Oracle is coming up, going to be finishing soon. Second Oracle, first one's already arriving. The Adept Shade into the mineral line, by the way. So going to go in and get four drones. How many Adepts do we lose? Well, we're going to lose all three Adepts. I was going to say, how many lings did we kill? But the Adepts are just derping, targeting drones still. Showtime not going back to them. I appreciate you probably feel like those are sacrificed. And yeah, they, they absolutely are. But they could have killed like three, four more lings there. And at this early stage, that's kind of, you know, sometimes is nice because it can make the difference on these little counterattacks that Sarah will launch. So just a bit of a shame because that maybe didn't need to be as inefficient as it was. Although it was still good, right? We still got a good chunk of drones. Just maybe could have been that much better still, right? Queen's joining up, just going to see our overlords on the way out. Couple drones on the way through. Another spore coming up as well. Forge, Twilight Council, Gateway, all continuing. And our Storger just going to go pinging at this overlord as it flies through into the main. Oracles will join up together, going to move up the right hand side and potentially dive into the main base here. Well, council about to finish. Couple extra gates going through, plus one attack upgrade. All of that being brought in for now as our oracles get around the back and just seeing our drones get chased away from the natural queens. Holding out to the side, gonna see our oracles activating. Two, three, four, five, six drones going down actually. Good damage, man. I mean, this is the sort of damage you dream of as a Protoss player. There's now 10 drones in the game. You've lost a few Adepts, yes, but you've killed a few Lings. You also got an Ovi kill. The Triple Oracle is still relatively healthy. One of them's hurt, but the other two, absolutely chances to go back into Mineral Lines and dive a bit deeper if they feel like the drone kills there are worth it. So it gives Showtime a strong setup. Serral still playing catch-up on workers at the 60 worker marker. It's not a good sign for him. He's spending some drones now as well as he gets another Hatchery, Roachroar, and four Extractors, so... All of this just eaten into that work account and that economy that just at this stage should be that much larger, should be that much stronger here. And it just isn't right now. Stalker's thing on the hatchery, actually going to turn around and now the queen's in a bit of trouble as well. Getting chased away, triple oracle activating, getting rid of the first queen straight away. Oracle does go down, however. Can we get rid of one more queen? No, the queen's just about able to survive that. Stasis ward goes off, Ling's getting caught. Blink and plus one still building from showtime. Robotics facility from Showtime also producing now, so that Robo on the way up, just now getting started. Plenty of Lings still being made. So has the melee upgrade, that's why he wants to make Lings, he wants to play Ling Heavy. He wants to use them against these Stalkers. The Oracles don't have a ton of energy to help protect these Stalkers, let's see how this goes. I'll activate the Oracle here, the Stalkers begin to trade again with the damage that several has taken. I wouldn't be surprised if Showtime was able to do well. Good surround with a few of the Lings though, we lose an Oracle too as Showtime gets a little bit caught up, not realizing. And, uh, yeah, still going to trade decently. Obviously, as you move backwards here, these lings don't suddenly start trading better. In fact, they continue to trade quite badly. And Showtime has that plus one, but soon the melee upgrade will be here as well. It's still just lings out of several, spamming them out. 63 drones only. That's one of the big issues as well, the fact that the drone count is so low for several, so he has to start finding some efficiency. He caught a couple stalkers over here, forced them to blink back, now getting surrounds and kills on them, so basically just cutting off reinforcements minimizing the power of the attack on the other side. However, these Lings now, as they commit onto the Nexus, are going to be fully committed. It's a cancel on the Nexus. It wasn't that far along, though. Showtime can rebuild, and he is eventually going to clean up all these Lings. It does buy Serral some time across the map. Showtime begins to look toward the Robo Bay again, something that's been a consistent for him in this series. We are starting to see Roaches. Let's see if Showtime, because it's a melee upgrade this time, is going to prioritize any Colossi, or if he still just wants to go straight to Disruptors. That's been how he's played this every time, but Disruptors against the Ling Bane is just a little bit less reliable. Colossi, while maybe not as good overall eventually, can maybe be better at first. So let's see. I think he'll probably go Disruptors, though. It just seems to be the name of his uh, game plan today. Oracle Stalkers Disruptors. Well, not always the Stalkers, I guess. Kill on this base. Showtime having to recall away, getting caught a bit over on the other side. So that attack fails. Serral's attack works, and he is going to go Colossi. He sees the Roaches, so he knows it's not just Lings. But I think he knows because of the melee upgrades, he will, it's going to be very Ling Bane focused. Again, Colossi up to work through the initial round of Lings is very important. I wasn't 100% sure if that was necessarily going to be a uh, 
something he did go into because he has just been so committed to the uh, to the disruptors today. But like I say, it is kind of our first time seeing a bit of a melee upgrade first style, right? Infestation Pit is on the way up from Serral, so we're going to start seeing that tech coming through sooner than we have done in previous games. Well, I mean, last time Serral maxed out and went for an attack or two before the Infestation Pit dropped back in game number one. Obviously, game two was a very different game. Never really got into this kind of a stage. Not worth the comparison. Well, there's no comparison to make. You know, this time the Infestation Pit is definitely much sooner. And obviously provides the Hive opportunity much sooner as well. Extended Thermal Lance is currently halfway done and progressing. Plus three attack, getting started too. And a handful of Banelings going to waddle to the front of the natural expansion. We warp in two Stalkers, which... Oh, I was gonna say, it's a nice warp in. Three Banes snuck in, but honestly, the other Banes didn't, so it didn't even feel necessary. Those, I guess just while the Stalkers were warping in, they weren't chunky enough. They put on some weight when they warped in, and uh, suddenly they were able to actually block the rest of the Banes from coming through. Mr. Banes all coming up, 19 of them, plus one missiles, roaches, lings, all still producing the hive coming through as well. Oracle activating, a couple drones going down. Just going to be seeing damage being dealt. Our roaches and lings going to go through this set of rocks, just opening this up, making some progress through. We do have our hive already building up in the main base. And Missile's about halfway done. Dark Shrine about to be finishing up here. A couple extra gates coming in, plus three attack, and the War Prism all coming out. Those four extra gateways just producing, and again, Dark Shrine is about to be done. Things, Banes, Roaches, Ravages, splitting. We do have the Colossi, four of them here. How valuable can they be? The Stalkers need to find a time to bring back. Lings from the side just going to drag the Colossus Fire away from the bigger chunk of units at first. Here comes some Hero Archons. Can they be enough of a wall off to, well, help show time out? His supply has plummeted. Admittedly, Serral's supply has been rebuilt heavily in the reproduction, but yeah, man, all the Stalkers pretty much just getting nuked down and show time down at 104 supply. Well, Serral's just going to build up and go again, it would seem. That fight just wasn't it, man. The Archons kind of need to be in the front line sooner, I think. The Archons get to the front sooner, absorb a few more Banes. I think the Ling counter as well, the little Ling flanking is so valuable. Yeah, those Lings are basically sacrificed, but it stops the Colossi order firing onto the Bane Lings. And so a lot more Bane Lings actually make it to the army and get to spread that splash damage around, which is a major goal, you know, in an engagement like that. So that's got to be uh, something that goes a long way too, is Ling Road Ravager Bane. Just trying to push in at the front, not going to see a lot of action there. Disrupt a shot, gets a few Zerglings. Colossi still getting pushed away. Roach Bane coming through. First Colossus lift. Second Colossus. Gonna have to lift up and get out of trouble as well. These Bane's gonna go crashing into the mineral line. 21 dead probes. And that's gonna be enough for Serral to lock in his spot in the finals of the Kung Fu Cup's return. He is gonna take the 2 1 over Showtime, man. Just looked amazing in these bigger engagements. Uh, and Showtime just not able to take the fights required to really keep him, you know, on top of these fights or engagements at all, on top of these.